Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, and we've been joined by Jide Johnson, uh, the Chief Lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Well, I think we're going to come. Good up. morning. Good morning to you, Anita. Good morning. Yes, good, good to, to have, have you. you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Can yes. you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. We good can. morning. All right. Let's begin with the Daily Independent newspaper. The headline reads, Dangote, flour meals questioning Buhari's authority. And that's according to Boa. Tackles them over breaching sugar policy claims. Says they're afraid to end sugar scarcity and high price. Dangote, flour meals petition FG. Oppose Boa PH sugar refinery. Above the headline, police in a bar on rampage. Attack residents. Destroy tricycles. Gunmen attack another police station in Imo. Traditional ruler, cabinet chiefs kidnapped in Imo state. Below the headline, Atiku Saraki Secundus urge investment in education to fight insecurity. Bandits have lost rights to life, must be wiped out, says El Rufai. Tinubu here saying Aisha Buhari represents voice of conscience within presidency. 20 new private universities set FG's nod to begin operations. NARD insists on indefinite strike until FG meets demands. MDCN registrar gets 24 hours ultimatum to appear before reps. And PDP National Working Committee shifts dates, venue of Southwest Congress. Those are the stories on the Daily Independent. And now moving on to the punch newspapers, see so what we can uh, quickly squeeze in here. Or oh, I think we'll start with the Guardian first. Uh, this one here says decentralized police power judiciary now. El Rafi tells federal government. Also, caller accused 25 in Bayelsa as state records over 300 cases. Ex militants on rampage in Ondo set 17 houses ablaze. And uh, North Central APC chieftains push for power shifts to south. Senate faults unilateral conversion of uh, COVID-19 panel. And uh, we can also find here, you are, unusual, uh, you are an unusual first lady, voice of conscience, Ushimbajo, uh, Tinubu, eulogize Aisha Buhari at her book launch yesterday, by the way. Those are the ones uh, we can find on The Guardian this morning. And on the Punch newspaper, kidnap epidemic, gone men abduct 18 in Ogun. Oyo, Rivers, Imu, and Katsina State. Kidnappers whisk Ogun doctor and nurse away. NMA expressed concern. Gunmen kidnap Imu monarch, five traditional rulers, and two palace guards. Katsina abducted a man's corpse, found after payment of ransom. Family mourns. That's strange. Very strange. ShopRite says, trade, forex policies, others hurting businesses, says LCCI. Marketers project petrol price reduction as oil falls. State police way out of banditry, insurgency, Elrufi insist. FG meets resident doctors after eight day strike today. Delta communities threaten shut down oil firm over massive spill. And we can see photos here of that oil spill in Delta community. CBN freezes another 194 firms and BDCs and others' accounts. FG approves 20 private universities, says existing 197, too small. Quara working with Lagos on dairy and rice production, Abdul Razak. PDP governors in Zamfara beg Mutawali not to join APC. Ogun Prophet arrested for rape of 17-year-old member of church. And lastly, on the Punch newspaper, NIN inclusion delaying commencement of UTME registration. And that's according to JAM. All right, uh, moving away from the Punch now, let's see what we can find on the Nation newspapers. Attacks on Northerners must stop, Governor warns. It says uh, we may retaliate against Southerners. ACF cautions against risky comments. Power generation drops to 2,805 megawatts. Oshimbajo, Tinubu extol Aisha Buhari's role in government. And uh, bandits should be wiped out, Erufai insists. Uzodimma Okorocha clash over Owere attacks. 
police station attacked once again. We can also find on the nation abduction, violence, arson in Undo, Oyo, Kwara and Rivers. 15 houses raised in Eseodo and uh, uh, three kidnapped in Ibarapa. Five die in Share. Also, uh, 20 new varsities get licenses. Uh, Mexico returns stolen Ilefe artifacts to Nigeria. Those are the ones we can find on the nation. I think we'll take a pause there um, and bring in uh, Jide Johnson All uh, right. this morning. And uh, let's uh, just quickly look at the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, it, it says, gunmen abduct monarch and chiefs attack another police station in Emu. We've seen the stories in all papers this morning. Above the headline, why PDP shifted Southwest Zonal Congress to Oshobo? One nine three varsities grossly inadequate for Nigeria's 200 million population. That's according to the federal government. Eight kidnapped RCCG members regain freedom. Missing Nigerian students found dead in UK forest. Man burns ex-lover, two children to death in Ibadan. Nigeria receives stolen artifacts intercepted in Mexico. Mietia Lai saying to the ACF here, governors on Sirius, not 400 grazing reserves enough for all herders. And uh, APC North Central is telling Yahya Bello here to drop his presidential ambition. And the power generation falls below 3,000 megawatts. Good morning again to you, Mr. G.D. Johnson, and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. Uh, good morning. Good morning to you. I think um, we should start with the economic news, uh, which has to do with the petition written by Dangote uh, against Boa and Flam music and Dangote against Boa. I, I think um, we broke the monopoly of in the telecom sector by allowing private participation into the telecom sector and that the monopoly of NITEL was broken. That was why MTN, Econet then, and later Glow Mobile participated in that sector. In the past, telephone used to be the, in fact, the former minister in Nigeria and um, a Senate president for three times once said that telephone is not meant for the poor, but it's been proved to the telecom sector. I am not um, happy with this. We, we have replaced government monopoly with private monopoly. I, 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 I'm in the process, we are, being, we are building oli, oligarchy. Oli, oligarchy in terms of political structure oligopoly in terms of economic structure where the team okay mr jide johnson only jide johnson can you hear me resources and the mass is at the mercy of i think this should be an embarrassment to the government yeah mr jide johnson so are you saying you agree you with yes are yes, you saying can. you are basically agreeing with bois hello can you hear me mr jide johnson Right, Sadly, um, we're having, struggles. you know, but this issue is a really big one. You know, Boa has responded to, you know, the joint letter by Flour Mills and Dangote against its sugar refinery. Uh, is saying that uh, uh, basically they're co-conspirators. And Boa is basically accusing Dangote here, saying wherever Dangote finds himself, he tries to stifle out competition and tries to monopolize the whole industry. So it's a, it's a, it's a big issue here we have to address and uh, trying to figure out where Boa is coming from here saying that uh, he, basically what Dangote is trying to do is to undermine Buhari's authority regarding the sugar you know, national plan. But I wish you could get Mr. Jide Johnson back here to help us analyze the story. Mr. Jide Johnson, can you hear us? I don't know if you know, Dangote is a minister or a you know, member of the Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. So. Yeah, I agree with you because I had your analysis while um, I was a bit minor. All right. Judy Johnson, we may have to uh, reconnect with you via phone. I think it might be uh, easier for us to get through to you 
that way. Uh, seems your network isn't too stable this morning. And so we'll take, uh, of course, uh, we'll just continue and uh, we'll reconnect with you via phone. Yes. Um, so while we, while we wait to get back to uh, Judy Johnson, th there, there are big issues across the country right now. And I think this one here that we've seen in uh, uh, the, the Daily Independent, it says police in our bar on rampage attack residents, destroy tricycles. I don't know if you saw that video on Twitter yesterday, but it was terrible. According to you know eyewitnesses in 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 you know the state, they said that policemen and we can't really verify that because anyone could be dressed as a police officer, but that policemen came there and started to shoot sporadically, you know, basically destroying vehicles around there, basically destroying tricycles and firing tear gas that they're looking for IPOB members. I really don't know how far this war is going to go because that's what it's seeming like right now. For police officers, if they are indeed police officers to just go around and say, you know, prisons were, were, were allegedly broken into in, uh, in, in Imo State, and uh, IPOP members are responsible, even though they've claimed not to be responsible, and, you know, going after innocent people. I don't think that's the right cause of action. I don't think that's, that's what should be done. I, well, I don't it, expect the police to be doing this it's, it's to uh, just innocent, ordinary Nigerians on the streets. Well, we don't know who is innocent and who isn't, um, but the... It's, it's, a, it's a reminder that, you know, we just got a new inspector general of police and one of the things that we've have co had conversations about is, you know, what type of police reforms are needed? Um, in what ways do, you know, the police need to be better? Um, and in what ways also can the police carry out their assignments uh, with, you know, more effectiveness? Um, what level of, of intelligence gathering does the police need to have at a time like this instead of just picking up random people or abusing citizens um, because they're angry. And just destroying angry, vehicles attacked. on exactly. the roads. Um, um, the IPOB has said that they are not responsible. Uh, the government is saying, oh, it's the ESN, it's the IPOB. Um, there is, that's a totally different conversation. But um, what is the responsibility of the Nigerian security agencies at, at a time like this is to use intelligence and figure out who is responsible for it. Not, you know, with propaganda, not with, you know, bad belay, not with anything. Just, you know, do the job, you know, um, right. And will there ever be punishment for airing police officers in Nigeria? Oh. Um, that's one of the reasons the NSAS protest started in the first place. Um, when police are high-handed, when they abuse rights of citizens, when you know, there's extrajudicial killings or, you know, and, of course, loss of lives and property, will the police ever take responsibility and you know, um, punish airing officers? Not very you know, likely. So you would expect to see things like this. What really also will be the reaction of the Nigerian government to um, the incidents in, um, in uh, Imo State of mm -hmm. recent? I heard about uh, Bainway State that the army had you know, even attacked uh, certain locations in Bainway State, maybe also looking for um, insurgents or looking for bandits. I really have no idea why those places were attacked. Um, but <sighs> what is the response of the Nigerian government? Do the Nigerian citizens have any, any rights at a time like this? Jide Johnson, welcome back. Yeah, the, the network seems to be an issue. So, yes. I'm with you. All right, um, go ahead. I, th I think we would have, we'll move on to you know um, issues on uh, security now. Um, Dangote yes. and Bo um, Boa will probably will come back with that later. What is happening in Timu? Every every other gov governor in the south should 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 be concerned. There is a trend that is happening in Timu. And that's how the trend started in the north, with banditry in the northeast. That started from Zamfara, moved to Kasina, Kasina to Kaduna, Kaduna to, to Niger State. Now we are seeing a trend where police stations and formations are being set ablaze in Imo State. What is happening? What is the Commission of Police doing? What are the security agencies to Imo State doing? What is the chief security officer doing? And it should be a concern for, 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 for governors in the South East. And it should be a concern for the National Security Advisor. It should be a concern for the Inspector General Police. We can't have lawlessness. It is like we are in a state of anomaly. The chaos that we are witnessing across the country should be a concern for everybody moving forward. Because we have not even got into the election year. And what will happen when we start the election in 2023? Okay. I, I, I also because, want to... I uh, bring you in on, you know, statement by the governor of Zamfara State, uh, Bill Matawale, saying attacks on northerners must stop. It also says that we may retaliate against southerners. Would you expect that from a governor? Well, the 
that's the height of his responsibility. Who is the Nottana? Who is the Taubana? First and foremost, we are Nigerian. Then, from being a Nigerian, in terms of citizenship, you move to becoming state of origin. Where did you originate from? Now, then, from your state, you become an indigenous of the local government. So, we have three types of identity as a Nigerian. So, there is no identity as a Northerner or a Southerner. You are a citizen of Nigeria, you originate from a state, and then you are an indigenous of a local government. It's only in Nigeria you have, it's only in Nigeria you have those three identities. If you are an American, you are an American. So, and some of us have called us for us to use the state of origin to remove it in, in the way we identify our, ourselves. But that statement is a clear statement from a governor. Uh, in, in other times, we have forced the government to resign. How would you say an attack on the Northern before retaliation? Hmm. In fact, it should, it, should, it, should, it should be invited by the Inspector General of Police and to, for him to talk to him that you don't have such a statement from the government. People who are on, on what he has said and begin to do with special attack. And then what evidence does he have that Southerners are attacking Northerners or what have you? I think it's a reckless statement that we didn't talk from, right. from, from many problems. So, Mr. Gina Johnson, another story regarding security is this headline on the Punch newspaper. It, you know, they call it a kidnap epidemic. And uh, you talked about just how many people it, have been kidnapped. It, it can it, it soon be a pandemic if you are not careful. Mm -hmm. It will be a pandemic. It, 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 I think the only place that is, that is left out of this kidnap what there is the South Town. Now, you, are, you see the state being listed, Imo, Oyo, sorry, Oyo, Oku, and the rest of it. An average Nigerian is not, is not, is not confident in traveling. To, you see, when you are in secondary school, some of our friends attended secondary schools in far flood area. And parents, when they go on the visiting day, the visiting day is a way of touring Nigeria. Of story in Nigeria, in many places, and someone will leave Lagos to go to do that, to go and check the daughter, they will leave Lagos today, and they'll get to do that, they will, they, will, they will go through the stretch to see, to see their kids without any fear of being kidnapped. Can you do that now? Nobody can do that. Even the governors, the president, and public officials, I have challenged the Senate president, and I have challenged the speaker. For the speaker to leave Abuja and come to Lagos without the security issue, and for the Senate president to go to Yobe State to the state without the security issue, and let him travel, he needs to travel. Are you with me? Yes. The police, police, and inspector general of police. So the security situation in the country is a cause of and there should be national discussion on this matter. And that's why some of the governors, in one of the headlines read, that we need to decentralize the police. We need to decentralize. That's talking about uh, restructuring. Because the structure we have in place in terms of security apparatus and in terms of the structure of the police is too central. You must allow local people to take charge of their local security. You must do the most thing of key people in the security apparatus to post them to the areas where they are familiar with. I know the local standard of my community because I grew up there. Just imagine me being the CPU of that particular police station. I knew the trouble spot. So I know what to do. So we need to look into that until we adopt a decentralized approach to our policing system. We continue to be having this problem we have with security. It's, 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 it shouldn't be an epidemic. It's just, it, is, it should just be an epidemic. It's an epidemic, rather. It should be a pandemic that will affect almost every part of where, from physical point of view, it's an epidemic. But from an emotional point of view, it's a pandemic. Because everybody is scared of traveling. Okay, Mr. Gide Johnson, let's let's turn away from security to education now. On uh, the newspapers this morning, one story we saw repeatedly was the fact that uh, the federal government has granted university licenses to about 
20 universities, private universities in Nigeria, uh, saying 193 universities grossly inadequate for Nigeria's 200 million population. Uh, these are private universities here. I remember that as far back as 2016, ASU has been kicking against, you know, you know, this, you know, emergence of private universities and privatization of public universities, saying, you know, while the government is, you know, has grossly underfunded, you know, the public universities, you know, they keep giving license to, to private universities to the detriment of the poorest in Nigeria who can't afford, you know, those public universities. Well, what do you think about the situation? Good news or not? Well, for as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's, it's good news. In matters that I'm fine, you know, in respect of what you're just talking about, I think from the education program of, um, of, the, of the private university ministry. You see, I, I was talking with some colleagues yesterday and we had a conversation. And I uh, just so, so about this issue of private university publishing. And I asked, when public, when public secondary school started, we attended, we attended public primary school. When public secondary schools started and it becomes a book then, people said, oh, they will destroy the educational system and what have you. Competition creates perfection. That's why it's not part of competition. Not the competition, there will be perfection. One, can the federal institutions and the state institutions we have, can they accommodate all the students that are looking for admission, no. Mm. So there's a need for private participation. However, there's a need for this thing to be regulated. We must keep our eyes on the ball. This thing of this must be regulated so that the standard of the education, the standard of teaching and learning does not fall. It is not about the number of institutions you have, it is about the quality they are dishing out. Okay. And that is the area in which you must focus in. That All is right. the responsibility of regulated bodies like. National University Commission, the responsibility for university education, and the National Board for Technical Education for Polytechnic and Monotechnic. So, military body which are government interested in one thing. It's like someone saying, oh, we have had enough private, we have had enough um, radio stations and TV stations, and government shouldn't give licenses to private right. um, broadcast stations, media yes. organizations. That you are trying to keep competition, you are trying to keep fairness. They are trying to establish what why it's trying to fight the case. So I think it's a welcome development, but the standard should be in terms regulated. of regulation must be maintained by the regulation right. that are in charge of it. So I, I'm in support of um, those private All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we apologize for the uh, network glitches uh, that yeah, we had, uh, glitch we had I, this morning. I'm, I'm in a day in Russian state. I'm in a day in Russian state. Oh, okay. I see why so now. Yeah, I am. The network right. is... Um, all right. All right. Well, Thanks thank for joining us regardless. I'm glad uh, that you could make it um, at least till the end. Thank you very much. <laughs> have a great weekend. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good All time. right. Stay with us. Uh, we have uh, Today in History coming up next. I'm sharing with you something that happened in 1999 in Niger Republic. It's about an assassination. And uh, it's a pretty short one, but you, you hear about it. Yeah, mine is still about an assassination. And you wouldn't believe the story <laughs> <laughs> after the break.